Hi, today I would like to show you a couple of different ways of assembling picture frames with the Hoffman dovetail joining system. All the samples that I have here have been routed on one of our routing machines. I have the corresponding keys uh, picked out and I want to show you a couple of different ways of how you can actually assemble the corner on your frames. First one here is uh, a nice flat maple molding, uh, pretty straightforward, uh, they're very easy to join. You would simply apply some glue on both sides on your miter face, uh, slide the two pieces together and then insert the dovetail keys. And there you go, pulls the joint tight, aligns it good to go. Uh, the same idea here on a smaller piece. It has a rounded profile uh, but we only have one key right at the thickest part of the molding and uh, again we can assemble that simply upside down. Glue on both sides, slide the uh, molding together, insert the key. Next example I have here is a little bit wider stock. Uh, this molding has a curved top here, but it also has a high outer lip that is at the same height as the top of the curve. And even though it is curved, you can slide it together and it will not drop down. Uh, so it makes for pretty quick and easy assembly here as well. tight and we've got a nice tight joint all the way across from here all the way down. The uh, next example I have here is some taller thicker box molding, uh, fairly substantial material. Uh, again you have a flat face that you can set down. Of course I put some mat board down here. Again glue on both sides. And you always want to apply glue here and then slide the parts together, line it up. And the dovetail key goes in. And there we go. Put this over here. here I have something a little bit heavier still. Uh, we have a nice ornate finish on top, fairly tall and thick. Um, it, it does tend to fall over, but if you hold it with one hand while you insert the key, you can still hold it. And uh, again, we have the key here on the highest part of the molding. Apply some glue on both sides, set it together, and the keys are all rounded on one end. That helps you get them started. Next we come to your shadow box material, uh, also the, the thin, fairly thin, very delicate uh, little frames, again with the, uh, the flat front, same assembly here, glue on both sides, dovetail key, this time we're using our W1, the smaller keys, and even material as thin as 5 16th of an inch. We can still join with the dovetail key and you'll see a nice tight joint here. This is also nice if you have a large piece of artwork to join and a very delicate frame that is a little bit more difficult to handle once it's a couple of feet in length and width. Uh, you can actually assemble it around the artwork one corner at a time with the keys rather than trying to handle the whole frame onto a machine. And then this is a taller shadow box, about three inches, a little three inches. Um, again, glue. And we're using our 
W1 2 and 3 8 inch key, about 60 millimeters. Slide that right in. And there you go. So these are our samples, examples of molding with um, fairly flat face side, fairly easy to assemble. Uh, but of course, custom framer, nothing is <laughs> ever easy and you do have a lot of molding that is profiled on the front and uh, the way I look at it is it's, there's two types really. One has the thick or high part of the molding towards the outside edge and it tapers down towards the inside towards the outwork uh, or the other way around with this example where we have the thickest part close to the glass, close to the picture and then we're tapering off to the outside. Uh, the way to assemble something like this is the molding of course tends to fall down here and if you try to assemble it like this with a key you'll never get a nice tight front joint. You need to bring the molding up so that it's straight and support uh, this area. And over the years we've tried a couple of different things. We've tried uh, a stack of playing cards in different heights. It works okay but playing cards are of course fairly slippery and so that makes it a bit more difficult to get the right thickness. Um, cork coasters work very well, give you a nice support, uh, but they're fairly thick and it's difficult to get them lined up just for the right height. Um, we've used door stops, I'm going to use it on the other uh, example here. They're available in hard rubber, home improvement stores, Walmart and so on, department stores. Fairly inexpensive. I bought a set of three for about a dollar here. Come in different sizes. They can be set here and as you slide them in and out you can adjust your molding so that it's the right height. Or lastly, simple 3 by 5 inch index cards. Um, this has really proven to be a very quick and easy way of, of joining any kind of uh, profile molding. And what you do is you simply set your cards here set your molding on top and I always try to be either right on or a little bit high with my stack of cards. I'd rather see a slight open joint on the top so when I insert the keys and put pressure on it, it tightens right up. If you don't have enough cards on here, it looks tight on the top but you can tell on the inside corner it's open and if you drive a key in now, it'll just get worse, It'll, you'll never get a nice tight joint on the front. So uh, use the cards, set your molding on here, again you would apply glue on both sides, slide it together and insert the key in the thick part, in the highest part of the molding first. And then the second key here on the inside. See how that joint pulled together all the way across. It's not open, it's tight on the inside, all the way down the outside corner. The other one I have here is this molding. Like I said before, it's the opposite. It's high towards the outwork, drops down towards the outside. Um, here you can take your uh, rubber door stop, apply some glue, slide the parts together. Simply slide it onto the stop and that holds it in place and you set your key. And here's your joint, perfectly tied together. Okay, um, I've got a stepped floater frame here that's kind of a, a hybrid. There's two ways to do this. Uh, one you would route from the back side, from the bottom up, for your tall key and then for your short key here. And again, you would assemble it from this side, put a big stack of cards in here to build this up. And assemble it just like you would any profiled frame. Or on the other side, I simply route it, see this? I route it all the way through because that gets covered by the artwork later. Uh, makes assembly a little bit quicker. Uh, you also 
do not have to adjust your routing height like you do here for a uh, quarter inch key and a uh, about an inch and a half key. You'd simply set your height for inch and a half, cut up, reposition the molding, cut all the way through. And to assemble this, what you would do is pull the long key first. And then we simply flip it over and now insert the key from this side. Got the little dovetail key here in the corner, nice tight joint all the way around, and that's your step floater frame. Um, here I've got some ornate molding. You could assemble this upside down with cards, it would work just fine. Uh, this is fairly sturdy finish here, but on some of the more delicate, more expensive, high end. Uh, guild of moldings, uh, where you may not want to put it upside down no matter how well you pad it, you can assemble the frame from face up. And what you do is you insert the keys on one side, and you're going to drive them in, and now you would apply glue around the keys, not don't need any glue on the key, but around the key, and simply set the other He's on top and now you need to press down on it. And get that lined up and push together. Um, this approach works. The reason we don't recommend it, or we recommend it only in cases where it's absolutely necessary because of the molding, is when you slide the two parts together like this, you're you're scraping the glue out of the joint. In woodworking we talk about starving a joint, starving a joint of glue. And you really don't want to do that. You're really much better off if you have two pieces of your molding, you apply glue on both sides, and you slide them together and then insert a key. Um, if you do it like this, uh, insert the keys, apply the glue only on the side that has the keys, not on the opposite side. When you slide it together, you will scrape a lot of glue out to the back side. But if you put glue on both sides, slide it together, you'll also scrape some glue up to the face, which is not where you want. So there's a way for heavy, ornate, very delicate molding to join it with dovetail keys. And lastly, I want to show you uh, two examples of stretcher frames. Stretcher frames, or strainer frames, of course, have a lip for the canvas. And you could assemble them just like you do with uh, profile molding, upside down with cards or a wedge on this side. Uh, but really, the easiest way to do a, a strainer frame is to simply route all the way through and insert the key from the front. Uh, we can route all the way through because once the canvas is stretched, once the canvas is stretched over the frame, you don't see the front anyway. And that's a fast and easy way to assemble a, a strainer or stretcher frame because you have a, a flat back side here and you drive the key in from the front. Um, there's one more example I've got. Also a stretcher or strainer frame. This time we're using two keys. And the same idea. We simply apply some glue, slide the uh, pieces together. If you're too close to your lip here and you're worried about hitting it with your hammer, a about eighth inch diameter round steel punch from every uh, any hardware store, and you set that on top of the key and use that to seat the key without marring anything around it. So there you have it, a couple of different ways of joining uh, custom picture frames with the Hoffman dovetail joining system.